Uh, but we'll begin from Achimoto School, and we know the uh, issues that have come up. Uh, tonight, we will participate in the conversation and try and settle the matters. We see the issue really um, appearing in the 1992 Constitution. Article 21.1c thereof is where the issue will be determined if ever the matter goes to court. But if you have not heard about it, um, Achimoto School admitted um, a, a boy, or the, the placement admitted a young man to Achimota School. I didn't actually know that um, you can be, you can take the Nazarene vow, which is what the Rastas tell us, it's the meaning of the dreadlocks they wear, that you can take the Nazarene vow at a young age like that, like 15, 16. I mean, how old do they go to, to senior secondary school? They go to senior secondary school probably at maybe 15, yeah, maybe 16, is it? Something like that. Or if you're older, maybe 18. I didn't know that people can take the Nazarene vow at that young age. For what I know, uh, people take the Nazarene vow sometimes after university or when they are in university. But this boy is wearing dreadlocks and it looks like he comes from a family where they subscribe to the uh, Rastafari religion. And um, they've been talking about it. So Achimota School initial reaction was to reject the boy from the school on the basis that his hair was not kept in the correct way that the school rules allow. That's the purpose of our editorial uh, tonight. His, his hair was not kept in the way in which the school rules allow. And, and uh, therefore, they rejected his uh, application or his admission. The Ghana Education Service then came into the matter and decided that, no, um, we will not allow this. That was the Ghana Education Service's first reaction. They said, we will not allow it. OK, what will they allow? They would allow uh, their agent at motor school to allow the boy to go to school and, and to learn. And then social media started all over the weekend. As you know, they say opinions are like gnosis. So we all have one. And everyone was writing. It was important. It showed how um, alive Ghanaians are to our civic instincts. So everyone was talking about uh, Achimota School and what should have happened, what shouldn't have happened. In the middle of that, the Achimota Old Students Association issued a statement, and we're going to look at that statement critically. When we are done looking at that statement, we'll give you our own verdict uh, from the 1992 Constitution. For our viewers on Facebook who have been complaining that our sound was distorted, we have realized that uh, the playing of the montage, which included uh, Bob Marley's famous um, Buffalo Soldier song, may have affected the copyright issues, and that's why our sound was being muffled. Uh, we're trying to rectify that. It might mean that when we show that uh, for viewers on Facebook, you might not be able to see it, because I'd like the montage. I'll show it again after the program. Uh, it's a montage that... Uh, uh, synergizes Buffalo Soldiers lyrics, Dreadlock Rasta, with Achimota School's anthem from Gambaga to Accra. If you're just joining us, you have missed it. We have showed that already. Okay, so we were at the part of the story where uh, the old Achimota Association issued a statement. Let's go and have a look at the statement and then come back and look at Article 21.1c of the 1992 Constitution. You need to understand that Article 21 is in the part of the... Um, the Human Rights, Chapter 5 of the Constitution, where it discusses the rights that are fundamental to every Ghanaian, that every Ghanaian can practice. And in that space, in Chapter 5, 21 finds expression. And there's something about the freedom of religion, and especially the manifestation of it. We will look at that, and then we will pass our verdict. Let's now look at the screen and see what Professor Aite, uh, the kind of statement that Professor Aite penciled his signature to, uh, which came out at the weekend from the old Achimota Students Association. Uh, without much ado, let me have a look at it. Okay, uh, shall I go back? Uh oh, what's this? Can I have the, um, the Achimota uh, work? Okay, I'm sure it's going to come up soon, very quickly. Uh, they, they're doing it for me at the back, so it will come up very shortly. Um, da, 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 there it is. Okay, excellent. All right, so uh, let's have a look at this. This is uh, a note to Akoras on the Rastafarian saga, and it's like a letter to old Achimotans. It says, Dear Akoras, since last Friday, 19th of March 2021, the whole of Ghana has been engaged in a very lively conversation about admission or the lack thereof for two students, for two student Rastafarians seeking to enter uh, Achimota school. You can <laughs> see that uh, that's Professor Haiti writing. Uh, it says, last Friday, two students seeking to enter motor school. Okay, let's go to, it continues. It said, I have listened to and read all the different shades of opinions and argument for and against the actions of the school. It is a very healthy debate, and I think it must continue. 
uh, there's one more. It says, I am, however, very concerned about the fact that the Director General of the Ghana Education Service has issued a directive to the headmistress of Achimoto School through a newspaper interview to take in the students. Okay, now this is where the disagreement starts. Now, here they begin to disagree. After consulting my colleagues on the executive committee, I have written to the Director General of GES to express the concern of the old Achimota Association that his action has undermined the authority of the school's governing board. Okay, it continues. It says, the law governing the management of senior high schools in Ghana makes it the responsibility of the school board to ensure effective and efficient governance of the school, putting in place the required rules, regulations for that purpose. Prof. Saite continues, he said, even though the practice of GES officials issuing directives to schools is fairly common in Ghana, the current situation is probably the clearest example of significant breach in the formal arrangement for school governance and regulation. Quite very strongly worded statement there from uh, Professor Aite, very strongly worded. Okay, we, we, we move on. It says, we are concerned about the action taken by the Director General and have therefore requested that he rescinds the directive and allows the governing board to handle the matter. That, that's, also, that's, that's also very strong. Uh, Professor Aite says that they are concerned about, um, about the actions of the, of the GES. So basically what Achimota School is saying is that what they said in this statement is that because there's been some development since then, what they said in this statement is simply that, look, uh, the governing board is responsible for the, um, for the running of the school, yeah? And according to the rules, the governing board. So if students have not been taken in because they have uh, they presented themselves in a certain way and students have not been taken in, it is uh, ultra vice, if you like, overreaching the uh, school's governing council to, uh, to sort of um, uh, direct that the decision be changed, especially when, um, as they say, the, the directive was given in a radio interview or so. So that's what Achimota old boys were saying. They are saying that it is a matter for the governing council to handle. It's not a matter for GES, and that GES is really overreaching the governing council and the authority of the school. It even used the word undermining the authority of the governing council. Okay. Uh, let's continue. The final page says that the executive committee will keep a career surprised of any further development. So what was the further development? The further development was then that the um, Achimota people and the GES, and I believe the parents of the, uh, of the two children, had uh, a meeting, and that's where the drama starts. Because after that meeting, the, um, the Ghana Education Service sort of backs off, it rescinds its decision. It's no longer asking the people to um, Achimota School to admit the, the students composed really. It's now backtrack and it's agreeing that the procedure would have to be carried out and, and communicated by the governing council. So the two students, as we speak, have not been admitted to Achimoto School. That's the fact of the matter. They have not been admitted. And uh, the conversation goes on all over the place. And the parents have indicated that they may want to go to court to seek something. Now, that's where our uh, matter begins. That's where our opinion editorial begins. The, the process or the parents proceeding to court to seek, uh, if you like, justice. Now, if they go to court and we believe that they should so that we can have clarity on this matter, the main law that will be uh, called upon for interpretation by the Supreme Court will be Article 21, 1C of the 1992 Constitution. So they are going to court to make an argument that they have a right and that their right is being infringed upon. So really, any Ghanaian under the Constitution can go to court, as per Article 2. Uh, any Ghanaian who feels that any part of the Constitution is being infringed upon can go to court and then um, ask for redress. So let's begin to look at that clause. And that's the important part of the discussion. At this stage, there has to be a settlement of the matter one way or the other. Achimota have taken a firm position. The parents and the Rastafarian community and many other people have also taken a firm position. It will be resolved by the law. That's the beauty of democracy because democracy always has a judiciary. Now, let's come to the law and see what the law provides. Okay. So Article 21 of the 1992 Constitution is here with us. It's entitled the General Fundamental Freedoms. Now, 21 um, is, is where, 21, sorry, 21 is where the um, 
fundamental freedoms of, of Ghanaian, uh, the article chapter five is where the fundamental freedoms of Ghanaian people is put, is, is documented. So uh, let me make, make it, let me say it that way, it's documented. Okay, so article 21, there is, let's, let's begin to read it and let's put it on the screen so people can see it. Okay, so it's as follows. All persons shall have their rights to, uh, and A, freedom of speech and expression, which shall include freedom of the press and other media. B, freedom of thought, conscience, and belief, which shall include academic freedom. And C, that's our most important part. C, freedom to practice any religion and to manifest such practices. Freedom to practice any religion and to, let's put it back on the screen, freedom to practice any religion and to manifest uh, such practice. So that's, that's the most important part. Now that's where we're going to uh, express ourselves tonight. Freedom, let's put it on the screen again. Article 21, I have it in front of me. Uh, put 21 back on the screen. It says, all persons shall have the rights to freedom of speech and expression, which shall include freedom of the press and other matters, and other media, that's not our consent tonight. B, which is also not our consent tonight, but I'll read it. Freedom of thought, conscience, and belief, which shall include academic freedom. And C, freedom to practice any religion and to manifest such practices. Okay, so what is our story tonight? Our story is simple. Now, the Constitution says that there's freedom to practice any religion and therefore to manifest it. Okay, so the case of the Rastafarian people is that the wearing of dreadlocks is an expression and a manifestation of a religious practice. And if they say so, they will be urging upon the court that the court should confirm that that's an expression of a religious practice and it must come under Article 21C. It is a right of the students. Let's look at it carefully now. Okay, so Rastafarianism is a religion, isn't it? It is, okay. Christianity is a religion, it is. Islam is a religion, it is. Hinduism is a religion, it is. Um, African traditional worship is a religion, it is. Okay, so religion is fundamentally expressed in worship. But religion also on occasion carries an expression of an appearance, particularly the leader of the religious group. So in expressing a Christian Catholic worship, the Catholic priest will be attired in a certain way. When on Easter Sunday, which is coming soon, the, um, the papacy is presenting mass at St. Peter's Square in honor of Easter Sunday, he's going to present himself in a certain way. He's going to wear a robe like a cassock, a, a, the Pope thing. That's how the papacy will present himself. That is presenting himself, appearing in a certain way, in expression of religious worship. But he doesn't do that every day. He does that when he's presenting Mass at St. Peter's Square, on the Grand Good Friday or Easter Sunday, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The uh, Nai, the Ulomo in Accra, also in performing the uh, traditional rites around the Homo Festival, as the leader of the group, will present himself or herself in a certain way. The appearance will be in expression of the worship of the gods of the Ga people who have brought them out of hunger into abundance of food, which is the meaning of homo war, which is shame to hunger. So that Wulomo will present himself or herself in a certain way as an appearance, an expression of religion. But he doesn't do that every day. He does that when he is leading the Ghana people in to celebrate a festival and as the leader of the religious uh, hand of the Ghana people, he presents himself in a certain way. All of the pe people who attend the function don't dress like the Wulomo. All of them don't dress like the Wulomo. It is the Wulomo who dresses like that. Therefore, when the constitution says uh, the manifestations of religious practice should be permitted, we believe that's what it's saying. Okay. The Hindus have their festival. Recently, I spoke to a Hindu friend of mine. They were in Tema, and they had a festival, a 24-hour celebration, where they have to stay indoors for 24 hours and seek the, um, the, uh, the, the grace of, of their Hindu overlord. Um, you know, and, and that's what they were doing. In doing so, when they gather at a place, the leader of their group presents himself or herself in a certain way by appearance. That presentation is an expression of worship. So the argument that I'm Rastafarian, 
and therefore I present myself with dreadlocks and it's an expression of my religion, I beg to say should not be allowed to hold water. That Nazarene vow that they take is not even taken by all Rastas all the time. It's not taken by all Rastas all the time. It's taken by Rastas at some time. So you have Rastas who have either completed it or they finished or they are no longer Rasta. You find them all around. They are Rasta, they are no longer Rasta, but they are still Rastafarians. They still subscribe to the Rastafarian religion. But the appearance of dreadlocks should not be uh, captured within the law as an appearance of a religious manifestation. Because if we were to do so, we will interpret Article 21 to the logical conclusion. What did they teach us in law school? They taught us that when you are interpreting a law and the interpretation you want to give to it will send us to an absurd conclusion, then that interpretation is not a purposive one. If you want to give a purposive interpretation to law, it has to be a conclusion an interpretation that will not take us to an absurd conclusion. If we were to interpret Article 21, the way the Rastafarians want to interpret it, or want us to interpret it, that you have dreadlocks and it's an expression of your religion, and the Constitution says manifestation of the practice must be permitted, then I'm an African traditional person. On Akwesidae, we wear cloth, and we don't wear underwear or something like that. Or we wear cloth, and we, we tie something around our neck, and we go. So if it's Akwesidae Thursday, and I'm going to maths lectures, in Achimota school, I want to present myself like that. That is the absurdity to which this ana analysis that the Rastafarians are pushing on us will lead us to. It will lead us to a total absurdity. So uh, somebody comes and says that I am Muslim and I, I have to be praying at this time. So the 9 o'clock exam uh, which is the English literature exam, I'm unable to take it because at that 9 o'clock, I'm in a fasting period and I have to be praying. That is an expression of my religion. That's absurdity. When the Hindu comes and says that I have to dress in a certain way every Wednesday. So every Wednesday, I will not wear the uniform. I have to present myself in a red cloth, in a red turban, have some green stuff around my hand. That's how I present myself as an expression of my worship. If we were to do that, we will take Article 21 uh, down the hill. It will, will make Article 21 an unruly horse and we will not be able to deal with it. So the Article 21C, which you now find on your screen, which says that uh, C says... Uh, all persons shall have the right to the freedom to practice any religion uh, and to manifest such practice. The manifestation of religious practice should be construed as worship. How to worship. We make noise when we are worshiping even that, you know, you know that in the law, I, I didn't bring it, I, was, I should have showed you. When you make noise when you are worshiping, you can be fined by the Metropolitan Authority. There are bylaws with the AMA, with the KMA that prevents people from making noise. So if the constitution says that uh, manifestation of practice of any religion, it doesn't mean you should make noise. In the same chapter 5, it talks about uh, where the rights of people end um, with other people's rights beginning. I'll find, I think it's in, it's in the chapter 5, uh, clause 1 or something like that. I'll find it here. It talks about, in the preamble to chapter 5, it says that these are the rights of the people of Ghana, but your rights should end if it is conflicting with another person's right. So where you are going to worship, and, and people report churches all the time, but that's expression of their religion. Even that, it is curtailed. So how then can people tell us that presenting yourself in a certain way that is uh, contrary to the rules of a school that you want to subscribe to uh, should be allowed? Because if we are going to allow that, we're going to open the floodgate. I saw a story on, on Facebook that I was excited about where Accra Academy says that they have not admitted the students because the comparison was being made that what's wrong with Achimota and, and what is uh, wrong with uh, um, uh, Achimota officials. Why are they not admitted because Accra Academy does? There's also been some talk about uh, photographs on social media indicating that when people are foreigners, I see some... Uh, uh, Caucasians who are, have long hair and they say that they, they are allowed something like that. I don't, I don't know that well. I've not looked at it. But I've seen that on social media where people are trying to compare uh, the way Achimota relates to different kinds of students. And they are raising issues of racial discrimination and all of that. That's important. It should be looked at. But as far as we are concerned, in ending this editorial, we think that Article 21 does not and should not be interpreted to allow an appearance of dreadlocks in a secondary school if the rules of the secondary school do not allow it. For the last time, let's see the, the law again of the 1992 Constitution. I have it here. Let me read it. It says that all persons shall have the right to A, freedom of speech and expression, which shall include freedom of the press and other media, is on now, uh, and uh, B, freedom of thought, conscience, and belief, uh, which shall include academic freedom 
and uh, freedom of practice, freedom to practice any religion um, and to state and, and, and to manifest such practices. Okay. I like it when people are watching the program and they are telling me uh, what's uh, adding to the information. Somebody has reminded me of Article 14. Beautiful. Fantastic. It, uh, it adds up to this, uh, the Achimota School story. So I will take Article 14. Sorry, I have a small accident. My spectacle is broken. One side of it is gone. It's, it's lying here. Uh, but I need it to read. So I will wear it this way. And I'm sure I can see it by, by the time I come on Thursday. I, I would have fixed it. Hopefully, <laughs> Forgive me about that. Okay, so Article 14 of the 1992 Constitution is as follows. It says, every person shall be entitled to his liberty, and no person shall be deprived of his personal liberty, except in the following cases and in accordance with procedure permitted by law. And it's the exceptions for personal liberty says in E, 14.1E, E for elephant. Article 14.1E says, for the purpose of education, or welfare of a person who has not attained the age of 18 years so that your personal liberty can be restricted for the purpose of education or welfare of a person who has not attained the age of 18 years. We believe that Achimota should be allowed to reject students who have presented themselves in dreadlocks even if their argument is that they are doing it in expression of their religion and even if the argument is that Article 21 um, 1C allows them to do so. 14 does not allow them to do so. And we do not believe that 21 1C talks about appearance as an expression of religion. Religion is worship. That's our firm belief. From Kabaga to Accra, from Riyasa to Kita, we are brothers and our mother is a school. She will guide us all and each so to learn that we may teach.